Haskell, Jimmy Himes, and Nicholas Hill. Hey, Rick, I know you said the other day just getting to this point is an accomplishment in itself, given what everybody's been through in college basketball. And I know there are bigger prizes out there, but, but how much would an SEC tournament title mean? I know you probably hear this time of year. It's been since 1979, and you guys have been knocking on the door. How much, how much would that mean to get that? I don't. I think any time you can win a championship, it means a lot. I really, I really do. I think it sets teams apart. Even you know, people, people, you know, they recognize champions. You think about it. As time goes by, they'll bring back champions, 15, 20, 25 years later, and recognize them. So, if, not to say that uh, championships are important, it's not being truthful because the fact is, everybody wants to win a championship. Rick, do you think that how you perform in an SEC tournament can carry over to an NCAA tournament? You no, know, Jimmy, I, I don't know. I've seen it sometimes when you think it will, the momentum works, sometimes you don't. I, I just think that once you get through, uh, you know, the SEC tournament, depending on how far you go go in it, then you're going into a whole different tournament. You know, that you know we talk about playing on Sunday and having to turn around playing on Thursday, all those type things, situations. I, I just don't know if there's just one way to answer that because sometimes you can say, yeah, that we benefited from it. Other times I think you could say that it wasn't good. I, I remember the year we won uh, the Big East Championship at Providence. We came back and had to play on Thursday, and our guys were still in a celebration mood, and the whole state was on in Rhode Island from, from winning the Big East tournament. And, and so, uh, again, the key is that you just got to – Again, go one day at a time. You win. You you got to enjoy it certainly, but if you don't, you just got to get on to the next one and hope that hope that you can. Your preparation is everything, but it's not just physical preparation; it's mental preparation. And also, John Fulkerson had a really good game against Florida. Do you think that'll carry over? Do you think it gave him enough confidence that it might carry over to the SEC tournament? Again, you hope, Jimmy. You really do. Uh, you know, there's times this year where I felt like. John had done some things in a game that it would get going, and he still struggled at times with it. And uh, and I thought most of the time when he struggled, it was due to stamina. And so, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, being optimistic and positive, yeah, I hope it does. I do. And, and again, believe me, nobody's pulling for him harder to carry over what he did uh, Sunday more than all of us that's involved with him, his teammates, coaches. We want to see him do that because we think he deserves it. But he's going to have to, he's going to have to do it. Coach, when you're when you have a double buy in a conference tournament and you don't and you don't know who exactly you're going to play on Friday, in terms of your preparation, how much of it's just focused on getting the team ready, making sure that they're going for the fundamentals correctly, versus you know focusing on the opponents and potentially focusing on the game, especially whoever Florida plays tomorrow in the game that'll determine who you play. Well, what you just said is you're right. We don't know who we're going to play, and we're not going to speculate who we're going to play, but in terms of getting ready, like today, we'll practice today. We'll have an hour. We'll have 30 minutes early in the morning optional for guys that want to get up early and go shoot at Memorial. Then we'll have a, an hour, I mean, at uh, Brickstone. And uh, uh, then we have, what, an hour, right, I think, at Memorial. Yeah, sure, like that. That's what we have. I know we have an hour. And so it, it'll be about our fundamentals. You know, where we know, we're areas that we know that we've got to continue to get better where we're going to see regardless of who, who it might be. It could be. Dribble handoffs, a lot of dribble handoffs. It could be ball screen defense. It could be post defense. I mean, the things that you know, so many teams do so much of the same type things. But today we'll, we'll work on, uh, and obviously tomorrow too, because we won't know our opponent. Uh, we'll work on uh, the, the fundamentals that we feel that we need to continue to get better with. Lewis, Rob Lewis, and Mike Wilson. Uh, Rick, the SEC tournament is when, you know, COVID-19 really started to impact our country, uh, impact sports world in general. When you reflect on that day when the SEC tournament was canceled, what do you think about and has all of this made you feel different about basketball in general? Well, you know, it's coming up on almost a year to the day, I think, pretty close to when, you know, we were walking into the arena and, uh, and getting ready, I, I remember uh, being interviewed real quick, and then while in the middle of an interview with, with Bob Kessling, they came up and said the game's been canceled, and it was, and it seemed very, the whole thing was surreal leading up to that because it goes back to I think what happened in that NBA game with one of the referees that tested positive, and they, once you see a 
video on TV that everybody's watching where I think it was Chris Paul that ran off the court, you know. And from that time on, I think that's when a lot of people started looking around like, are we safe? Are we, you know, can we do this? Should we be doing this? And games started being canceled, you know, before our game. And But uh, really the, the most surreal part about it is we're a year later. And it seems in some ways like it's been forever. But yet, because I think it's been a long trying year for everybody, but uh, a year ago. And it, it's, now that we're here, you're like, is it really been a year? But in some ways, like, man, it seems like we've been doing this for so much longer. But I, again, I go back. I know the players have enjoyed uh, as much as they possibly can. If you're going to use the word enjoy this year, the fact that they got to do what they love doing. I think they would tell you to the man, it's been as hard on them than probably any of their college basketball or, or their basketball career. Just you go back when the season started. And when you saw games were being canceled and all this, you know, you were really, it was in your mind, or, you know, we're doing this work, or are we going to get to play? You know, and I remember the night we went to Vanderbilt and I got a call from Coach Stackhouse and he said, you know, we're not going to be able to play the game. And then from that point on, you went through a couple weeks there where you're like, this could happen at any point in time because, you know, we, we don't have any control over it. So there are so, so many of those little things that went on in your mind that when you were preparing, getting ready to play, and, and you look at what just happened at Kansas. I mean, that's – I mean, think about it. I mean, so we all know that we're not out of the woods by any stretch. I mean, this is our third day of, what, 10 straight days of being tested, and you just – every time you come in there, you know, you're holding your breath the next morning hoping that everything's come back – comes back negative. Coach, you guys have essentially played one game in two weeks. Do you think that's been good for you? Has it been beneficial, do you believe? I do think the week off helped us, Rob. I think I think that we started out uh, – again, I thought we were uh, – you know, we played hard Sunday. We were emotional and, uh, you know, and there's no doubt. But once we settled in, we played 25, you know, good minutes again I'm not saying we didn't play well to start with but we we had the tempo going we had shots we didn't knock down but which as you know the part of it but I like I do think the fact that it's allowed us to get healthy and uh you know it's allowed John folks to get a little more rest I think it's allowed him to get his hand right allowed him to get his shoulder right and then I think no doubt it's been good for Josiah but maybe for younger guys it's probably been good mentally uh because this time of year, young guys have played more, done more than they've ever done. So to that point, I think it is. I like to think that we can go to Nashville and, and play and play for a championship and and get back into that rhythm. But regardless, uh, you know, we're going to – our guys have been good. Like we basically went in yesterday and just did our daily vitamins with it. But overall, I do think this time of year, this time has helped us. And, and speaking of your, your young guys, Keon, Jaden, all – First team All SEC freshman, can you just speak to the year that they've had, the progress that they've made as you know they've kind of gotten more experience? Well, they have made a lot of progress, and they've had to do it at times when we've been struggling at teams where we put a lot on them. And early in the year, you know, and I've said it many times to you all that they didn't get a typical off season. They uh, just like all freshmen, all coming into college basketball, it, it hasn't been the normal year for them, and. So that that was a that was a major disadvantage again for all freshmen coming in to start with I think and and they they have done everything that we've asked them to do they've had to learn multiple positions for the first time that probably in their careers they've been asked to do a lot more from a you know thinking the game uh, aspect as opposed to just using their ability to overpower people or just you know out talent people uh, they've been. I mean, you've enjoyed, we've enjoyed coaching because they're competitive. They want to win. They, um, but they, they have dealt with the ups and downs of, of, you know, college, what I think college freshmen can go through. And right now, more than ever, I hope that they can just put it all together for, for themselves and for us. And, but you look at, again, with the, str the struggle that we've had as a team, the, and I say struggle. I mean, there's a lot of teams that like to say they won the, the games that we won and have a four seed in the SEC. But uh, we have we have high expectations. They have high expectations. And uh, but overall, I think they've, they've been terrific. Rick, you mentioned 10 straight days of, of testing. Have there been other changes to to protocol or anything else heading into the SEC tournament with your team? 
nothing other than what I would say going over there, uh, Mike, is that uh, normally we've been able to schedule our off-site practices whenever we wanted to, the time we wanted to. We're not allowed to do that. You know, we're, we either use that optional shooting time early in the morning in the arena, and then we go to Memorial Coliseum. Whereas in the passion, we would schedule at Lipscomb or Belmont or somewhere, you know, we would we would go and do our on, on the times that we want to do it and maybe even go back in the evening just to get guys out of the hotel just because this time of year, you know, it's, it's tough to stay in hotels, but that's what we're going to be mandated to do pretty much from everybody from here on out. And uh, but that, that's, that's, that, that, that is definitely a difference. And the other time, the other thing this time of year is different is, you know, fans come around, you know, they're around the hotel, people in the hotels, families around, more people, uh, all that's different. And uh, that's going to be much different. But in terms of the way we have gone about our business with dealing with our COVID protocol, the only thing that's different right now, again, is every day. We're, we're getting the old nose swab. Then are you guys headed straight to Indy from, from Nashville, kind of regardless of, of when you, you play? We don't, we don't know that yet, but that, that we won't, I don't think we'll make that decision until we see how things play out. Grant Ramey, Rick Russo, and Gustavo. Rick, is there something about tournament play that you think could play to, to your team's strengths, or do you think your team is built for some aspect of, of the way tournament basketball is played? I do. I, I mean, I think, I think we've seen enough of, different styles of basketball, what we're going to see. And, and uh, I like to think that we're, we're ready for it. Uh, uh, you know, I, I do. I mean, I know our guys, have, you know, they, they, they've given us everything they have. I, I do know that. And like I said, we've seen different styles in the league, uh, different ways and that people play. But uh, I, I don't think that right now that anyone can show us something that uh, – that we not we're not ready for because if in my mind as we think about this time of year we really do go back and think about every possible situation the way whether you're up in a game and people try to get after you that way or whether you're playing against a team that's just going to continually try to pressure you teams that play three quarter court you know type tempo type zone presses or zone all, all that stuff you you in your mind. You want your guys to be prepared for all that. And so, like a day today, uh, those are all the things that we'll be working on, our, our own stuff, own fundamentals, and not just defensively, but offensively, and, and know that whatever somebody throws at us, you know, we've got something for it. Special situations, all those type things that get down to the end. When you know you're going to be in possession of the game, if you're playing, both teams are playing well, you know it's going to be a close possession game, and you have to be able to execute special situations. Rick, following up on the uh, earlier question, it is a, a year later. How important is it for these league teams to be in Nashville this week and playing basketball, given what happened last year? Rick, I think it's really important. I do. I think I think it's been great for, again, our, our student athletes to have, have years, to have a season. And even though some have, are different than others, uh, I, again, I, I'll go back and tell you when I had um, – over Christmas when we talked about uh, first time and since I've been in charge of making a decision about people going home for Christmas, this is the first time we've never done that. But before I did it, I, I talked to some you know parents that certainly wanted to hear their opinion and coaches talked to parents and and the one thing that to the to the family they said we don't want to do anything to jeopardize our our sons from playing the game they love. And so if we need to come there, we'll come there, whatever it is. We want to do that because we know how much this game means to them. And we want to see them doing what they love. And so I think that pretty much says how, how, much, how much it means, not only to our players or players around the country, but parents see it. that They know this is what their, their kids love to do. And uh, the fact that we've been able to get it in. And, and you go back to where when it started in uh, – whether football, baseball, you knew there were going to be stoppages. And when you think about it, for the most part, the majority of teams have been able to get 20-plus games in, which I think anyone that's involved with the NCAA, the NCAA tournament would say, if we could get 20, 22 games in, 
as a majority, we'll be able to put together a, a really good postseason tournament. And I think we've gotten to that point to where people know that, uh, again, you can see the excitement when you watch these mid-level teams that have, uh, you know, there are one bid, you know, conferences, one bid conferences that win. The excitement, whether there's people in the fans or not, it's neat watching. I watched, I don't even what team it was last night, laying on the floor doing a snow angel with a confetti. So if you don't think it means a lot, all you got to do is watch that and know what it means to players. Go ahead, Gustavo. All right, Gustavo, we can't hear you. So we'll go to James Francis Hyams, Mike Wilson, mm -hmm. and then Trey. Go ahead, go ahead, Gustavo. We got you now. Uh, Coach, uh, East Bonds was selected, uh, named uh, second straight year uh, SEC All Defensive Team. How much East has represented in terms defensively? You know how you know how much you see this award? You know meant to Eves. Well, it, I think it means a lot because he knows that he's gifted and he's and he's able to do that. We've talked many times about where he's – we go into every game knowing that if some player really gets going to a point to where, say, if a close guy, a perimeter player, what it may be, Eve will have to – he's a guy that we have to we, – we can, we can use him, even though sometimes when we take him away from the basket, it takes away what he loves to do and that's blocking shots. But the fact that you have a guy like Eve who – one, he has the mindset and he and the love to want to go out and try to defend the other team's best player, block shots, rebound. I thought he did a great job rebounding the ball for us. If we can keep him active like that and, and making plays like that on the defensive end, that's when I think he's also his best on the offensive. When he's really at a high level defensively. But I think it's a great honor for Eve to, to, that people continue to recognize something that he is, is very good at. Jimmy Himes, Mike Wilson, and Trey Wallace. Rick, do you think the NCAA selection committee has a tougher job this year, given the uneven number of games played and the uneven schedules that were played as well? Jimmy, I, I mean, I don't know how much they're getting to use uh, the, the formulas they use in the past. I don't know. How, I don't know that. I mean, that's something that I guess when Mitch Barnhart comes out and talks about the field, he'll explain more. Maybe the different things they might have to do. Uh, knowing Mitch and knowing his diligence and the committee's due diligence, there's no doubt they've done their due diligence in terms of, of trying to get the very best students and, and looking at it and being as fair and, as they can possibly be and, and taking what information they have. Uh, would, you, would you say it's probably more difficult? I don't think it's any question it's probably more difficult because it's just not everybody's playing pretty much the same amount of games. and. Everybody in the conference plays had to play different ways to get to their uh, conference tournaments. You know, every league's had to adjust some way somehow. But there, I go back. There's that committee. It's, it's a hard job anyway. When, once you get down to the season with the automatic bids, obviously. But when you get down to the at large, every year there's a. I mean, there's a lot of thought that goes into it, and a lot. And so I would imagine this year, to answer your question, I would say it's probably more difficult than it has been in the past. Even though I think it's difficult every year, I think it's probably more difficult this year. You also had made mention recently that you believe in COVID fatigue. Do you think that has affected some of your players? I do. I do. Indeed, I, I don't think there's any question that I've seen it. I think it's – I've watched uh, – and I've talked to enough coaches around the country, too, to find out if, how they, they dealt with stuff. And I don't think there's any question that – it's not only our players, but it's affected other players as well. Rick, did you feel like the Florida film gave you more positive teaching moments than, than many games you've had recently? And how important is that when you're you're headed into this time of year? That, that's yeah, that's a good observation, and you're right. I, I think there's a lot of good things that we can take from the Florida game, and uh, on both ends, I do, and I and I think that we've. And when you go back after each game and you watch it, uh, there, there's there's obviously every game you can take some things from. But but your current, you know, we always talk about a couple of things. We always say you're never as good as you think you are, never as bad as you think you are. You're only as good as the last time out. But 
knowing that you, as good as you were, or as good as you might think you were the last time out, you've got to have the mindset, we've got to get better. You know, and it, and it will always go back to fundamentals. I, I go back to every game. You know, effort-wise, I, I don't think there's been a game this year where our guys haven't wanted to play hard, haven't tried to play hard. Have there been games when they've been more locked in mentally? Absolutely. Uh, there's no question about that. And and we've tried to analyze that as many different ways as we can in terms of, you know, do, do we do too much? Do we Are we doing not enough? I mean, all kinds of things that go through your mind when you're, especially when you're not as consistent as you want to be. And as much as you know that second, you know, what they call them, armchair quarterbacks are questioning what you, what, what's happening. Nobody's going to do it more than the coaching staff. We all, we have a lot of guys that, and I've always believed this, that, you know, the best leaders are the ones that have great leaders with them. And it goes back to our staff. I've got a staff that aren't willing, uh, they're not willing to, I mean, they're willing to voice their, their opinion, which is very, very important. So we're, we're constantly analyzing and looking at it. But one thing we don't want to do is try to fill our players up to where they become too analytical and not playing off instincts. And, and, so, I, and, and so to answer your question, I think there are, there are a lot, much more good things that we can take from our game with Florida in, in, on both ends. At, at the same time, you guys didn't shoot particularly well from three, but still scored effectively. Was that kind of a key thing to for the guys to take from that is that even when the shots aren't falling, that they still can score and not have to settle for more shots? Yeah, and, and I think the key is we will just execute and guys will take shots that they should take within the offense. We're going to rebound the ball better. I think that when – and and, it's, and I'm not telling you anything. We haven't told our team all year. It's when guys turn down shots is when we turn the ball over. You go back to every one of those games where we had high numbers of turnovers, and I can tell you this, we want guys to shoot the, shoot the ball. You know, we want we, now we want guys to play to their strengths, and we want them in shooting the ball. It could be a guy that's got a wide open three, but if he's better taking a one dribble shot, getting to 12, 15 feet, that's what he should do. But uh, the shots that when we get down to where we're up against the clock, I can go back and show you where if the shot was taken when it should have been taken, we wouldn't have been there. I can go back and show you. Probably 95% of the time when we turned the ball over, it would not have happened if somebody would have taken the shot that they should have taken. So all we can do is continue to keep encouraging guys to do it. I, I you know, I played the game. I know what it I know what it feels like when you when you just don't feel like you got the rhythm to make a shot and you get a little bit hesitant. But we still keep telling those guys that they'll get it on the glass, get it up there on the on the rim. It gives it gives other guys a chance to do what they do best. And that's one thing that we will not stop from here on out, just trying to get guys when they're open to shoot the ball. Rick, how beneficial, and if it is, will it be going to Nashville, not playing in front of a capacity crowd, you know, 25%, kind of the same thing that you guys have been doing all year. Um, is there any kind of big difference? Have you talked to players about that, what it's going to be like playing in a, a big arena with a small crowd in a tournament-like setting, or is it just kind of business as usual? I, th I think it's business as usual. We've seen it. I, I, would, th I would think probably, and I haven't thought about it, uh, I would think that in a tournament, the difference will be this year, there'll be, you know, most of your home, your team, you know, there, there's not many people travel their teams. Maybe this time the building will be divided, which will make it probably a little bit different than we've seen up to this point. Because uh, you go on the road, like we we've had some you know, people, uh, players, parents that have traveled to as many games as they could possibly get to. But in terms of the uh, atmosphere, uh, I think the way it's set up, the only tickets you get are from your game, and so you got two teams that'll have uh, have their fans in there, which that'll be different. And obviously, uh, depending on how many people are going to make the trip to get to Nashville, uh, so you could have a you know, just a divided crowd, which we we haven't done that much this year. Have you have you have you felt a a different kind of manner in the last couple of days, knowing that, or I'm sorry, your players knowing that this is tournament time, like this is a different time of year. There's other teams playing. Oh, there's there's teams. no doubt. I think there's yeah. yeah there's, they they know it. Yeah, they players know it. They do. I think they they're excited. I, I think too the the weather getting a little bit better, letting them get out. I think it's energized. A lot of people, and I think it's energized them as well. But yeah, they know it's tournament time. They 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 know it's different, uh, and I think that they all, in some ways, it gives everybody everybody's got a new start going to 
nationally. So uh, when you see Appalachian State, I think somebody told me they lost seven out of eight games and went in and got an automatic bid. So that's what makes tournament time special because we've all lived it. We've seen those type things happen. And um, so I think it, it, it can happen anywhere, anytime. Last two, go to Vince and Grant. Rick, you mentioned your coaching staff, and you've said many times that you think you have the best staff in the country. Is this the time of year in the postseason where having a great staff can really be a difference maker? Obviously, the players are super important with the short, short turnarounds and having to make in-game adjustments. It can be a difference maker for you? Yeah, you know what? They, they, they do, and, and where they, just like this time of year, Think about it. They're they're looking ahead. They're scouting two or three different teams right now. You know they they they've got it broke up. The teams they've already scouted, they know. You know they look at the bracket and know how could, we could play into it. So they they've been at it all week already. And we will go there pretty much with everything from our games, from watching some past current games with the people that we could possibly play play, and then obviously watching what goes on in Nashville will be added to it. But the key with that is that. We, we're not we're not going to overload the guys. You know, like I said, we don't we we, we want them by now. They we should be able to say to them on the fly in the game. We need to change our ball screen coverage. Here's what we need to do now. You know the adjustments. So as a staff, I think that that's where an experienced staff and guys that I know work as hard as our guys do. We'll we'll have that. But the key too now is that you think about it. You're going to be doing a lot of game prep in a ballroom where we'll take down the court and. And that's how we'll basically prep for our next game because uh, we won't have a chance to go into the arena or anywhere. Uh, I don't think. I haven't looked at what happened. I don't think we get the arena again uh, Thursday night or Memorial College. No, we don't get the arena, but Memorial College soon. So our prep from that point uh, will be in a ballroom. And uh, that's when they know that, um, again, that they'll come on and they'll, they'll get it done quick. And, 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 again, the main thing is – get your guys excited, I hope that they'll go out and just enjoy doing it and, and, go, and go get the job done. Rick, is he, have these first three days of screening been clean and, and injury-wise, do you expect to have full personnel available Friday? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it has been. And again, the, uh, like I said, we've got this is the third day, but everything's, everything's going well up to this point. But like I said, you look around and you see what happened at Kansas. I think they lost two guys, didn't they? They did. They did. And uh, to sit here and say that I'm not concerned or any coach, you know that would be naive. And, and uh, because every morning you're waiting for that thing to come back that all tests are negative. All right, coach. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Best.